So uh, let's introduce the first speaker, um, Dr. Tong, Dr. Tong Wen, uh, Huawei fellow and uh, wireless uh, CTO. Um, I think I'm, I'm, I think I believe a lot of people already know uh, Dr. Tong very well. So um, Dr. Tong is the Huawei fellow, IEEE fellow, and also the fellow of a uh, Canadian academic of engineering. And also, I know he was a uh, Notel fellow before. So that's the first time I know one expert have so many fellows. And, uh, and for his uh, uh, short bio, um, um, <coughs> Dr. Tong is head of the wireless research and also the head of the communication technology lab, uh, lab, lab laboratories uh, in Ottawa for Huawei 2012 lab. Um, uh, Dr. Tong joined Huawei uh, in um, March 2009 uh, from, uh, from Notel. Um, he was the, uh, the global head of the Notel Technology Labs at, the, at the Notel. And I just mentioned uh, he also the fellow for, for Notel. And he got the PhD in uh, electrical engineering in 1993 and joined the wireless technology lab at, the, at the BNR. So uh, in that's from 1995. So Dr. Uh, Tongs uh, worked in Notel about 14 years, 15 years, um, I believe so. And he and I know uh, Dr. Tongs' name for a long time when I was a uh, uh, graduate student. So he um, he pioneered the fundamental technologies in wireless with uh, 280 granted U.S. patents. And also, Dr. Tung was Notel's most uh, profitable uh, 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 in, uh, in winters. Um, during the, uh, his, his work with, uh, with, uh, with Huawei, uh, Dr. Tung has conducted advanced research um, work, work spanning from 1G to 4G um, wireless. And also, he, um, he worked for uh, Notel uh, since from 2007 to 2009, um, been the director of wireless technology labs from, um, uh, from 2005 to 2007. And he was the head of the uh, network te technology labs responsible for, for Notel's global strategy, uh, technology research and developments. Um, he was, uh, I just mentioned, he was the, the first batch of uh, Notel no fellows. Um, um, Dr. Tong uh, leading the, um, um, the, the Huawei uh, wireless and head of uh, Huawei uh, wireless research uh, lead, uh, for the, the one, is that's one of the largest wireless research organizations in, industry, in, the, in the industry. With a, uh, with a team of about 700 research engineers. And we know Huawei right now is the name everywhere. So I think it's especially for the wireless in 5G. Um, Dr. Tong's uh, group did a lot of field trial for, um, with the, I think it's yesterday we heard about the, the, the some, uh, some presentations for a field trial with NTT Dacoma. So definitely I think it's, uh, Dr. Tong will give more information uh, regarding to the, the, how the 5G will direct, and uh, we know a lot of people got a lot of interest for that, and from uh, our industry submissions, we know like 60 percent, uh, over 60 percent of submissions is for the uh, for the wire 5G air, wireless area. So that definitely, I think it's uh, uh, Dr. Tong will give some uh, in, uh, insight for us. So let's welcome. Dr. Tung to the stage, and uh, Dr. Tung's uh, um, <coughs> title will bring 5G into reality. Let's give him, him applause. Uh, thanks for the introduction, uh, Frank. Uh, good morning. Uh, thanks for the time to come. And my topic will uh, talk about 5G and talk about uh, the 5G uh, today and uh, all the efforts that uh, uh, for us and the industry wide and the academia research community also to bring the 5G into reality. 
So 5G, uh, in the timeline wise, it is a, a to start, should be started at 2020 uh, at the, in about five years. There's a lot of work to be done um, to make it in a market reality. So the reality I'm talking is, um, is the market reality and the market success. Um, for the past three years, we have a lot of discussions and also um, the promotion in, into this generation of the networks of the 5G. But the 5G uh, uh, is what uh, will be and going to be is way beyond what we uh, understand today or we can imagine today. However, uh, it is a very well uh, and amazingly consensus, global consensus uh, of the definition of 5G that achieved this year in the ITUR, uh, which is three directions or technical aspects for the 5G. So number one is the enhance the mobile broadband. Uh, so that is a continued uh, evolution of the current uh, mobile broadband market, uh, which is LTE. And, uh, uh, and the other, uh, you know, the LTE access prim primarily. The second new direction is massive machine type of a communication. So it will link a massive of uh, things. This is uh, the foundation for Internet of Things that we're talking about. So the third one, uh, by the ITU definition, is ultra reliable low latency communication. And this is also a very new area that will enable machine, uh, mission critical machine type of communication or uh, human to machine communication. Um, these two areas, in fact, also including EMBB, will have a, a bring us to a very new generation compared to uh, 4G, that is, uh, the, in mobile broadband technology connect the people, and then this new paradigm that we're going to move to is to connect the things. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the message here I want to say is what we really talk about is a tip of an iceberg. So this other two area going to be very huge than uh, we know today. Uh, for example, in the Massive machine type of connect connectivity in one square kilometer that we were, we were designing a system that connecting one million of sensors. That means every, uh, almost everything can be connected. And the ultra reliable communication is a very, very short latency. People are talking about uh, 500 microseconds, even that latency to control uh, the cars or things like that. Uh, very uh, new domain of the uh, of the usage of a cellular network. So the second very good news is in this year uh, the the industry is going to start to move to the standardization. So the standardization uh, will uh, start formally start in the next year. Uh, then uh, the the five in the in the two or four uh, four years we have further breakdown into few, few phases, phase one and phase two. Uh, phase one is mostly uh, for the early market. So uh, in the round of next couple of years or four years time frame till 2020, 20, you hear a lot of 5G uh, initiation or initial market launch. These are uh, uh, you know, the Olympic Games. 2018 in Korea, at the winter game and the summer game in uh, 2020 uh, in uh, Tokyo. Uh, so these are the, uh, the starting point or the big bang of uh, the real massive 5G coming uh, over. And then the phase two, we will have a, a first version of a specification in the uh, global standards that will meet all the uh, requirements that we talked previously, uh, meaning the enhanced the EMBB, massive connectivity, and also the reliable communication. And then it will have its own version and the evolve of this technology. Uh, there are a lot of uh, um, uh, the, the activity and the discussion, even debate around the industry, what should be in the phase one, 
what you should be in the phase two, and then where is the global uh, launch of the market will start. That, that is the uh, more or less the uh, second level of, of uh, details of, uh, of the discussion, very, very active, very positive. And then um, one very uh, 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 good news for 5G, uh, the compared to time of 4G and 3G, is a single global standards that become a consensus. So there will be a 3GPP standards. Uh, the, the, all the future wireless uh, will be built on uh, this standardization standards. So um, the 5G is a, a deeper innovation from my point of view. It is not a simple evolution or add-on of the existing technology. It will be uh, play a revolutionary role in terms of uh, uh, many aspects. You know, to name the, the, the most important one is the collaboration among the industries because uh, this is not a, a traditional telecom industry. Uh, now it becomes uh, many other industries will be connected to this network. Collaboration across industry is number one important for the success 5G. Second one is technology innovation. Um, the, the, in this point, a uh, lot of people and people were talking about that there's wireless also, also reached the limit and uh, the technology reached the limit. This is all evolution. evolution. There are not many, um, uh, many room for the uh, better technology than we have seen before that can revolutionize the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, wireless solution. So the thing is that we need to also still challenge the whole industry and academia, including the research community, can we further increase the spectrum efficiency? Can we uh, have a even more advanced technology or material or, or components technology that will bring a lot of cheaper and uh, uh, more economic energy efficient uh, network and device for the future? The third one is to look at the new spectrum. That means the, uh, the spectrum of, of the current cellular network is, is becoming limited or will run out of spectrum, so we have to explore the new spectrum, which has never been used before, and the lack of even understanding of a fundamental propagation of the, uh, the, the spectrum of the aspect. I think the global com, um, uh, we, we have one session uh, about the millimeter wave spectrum channel model and the propagation characteristics. So these are the three very key uh, uh, new aspects for the 5G. So it, 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 this is the part. Now getting to the detail part, I will uh, make a few charts to uh, uh, present what is the, the, the mindset or the, or the thinking of what 5G looks like. So this system will have a new radio air interface uh, which is also a, a consensus now uh, the, with, with some debate for the past few years. And this uni for unified, in, this L interface should be a unified design. So it is a very, uh, a single uh, L interface design meet for all the uh, requirements that we have put on in 5G. So there are, basically in 5G we asked everything and we also asked something we don't know in the future. Uh, in terms of a service. So these are boiled down, the uni it's, a, it's a one air interface that can be software defined. So the programmability of the air interface is a new aspect for the 5G. It, that we will say later because the of uh, uh, slicing, network slicing and the virtualization to create a new business requires the programmability of an air interface. And then uh, we need also rethink about all the uh, radio access network uh, construction, not only the physical air interface, but the access scheme. Uh, do we need uh, still the cell concept, or do we still uh, need uh, a, a cell and the user uh, interaction and the protocol like we defined for the uh, 30 years ago for the uh, analog voice call? So these are the uh, these are the f f uh, fundamental changes in, the, in terms of uh, uh, the people, most of the researchers in this room uh, that we work on, by physical layer and Mac layer. 
Now talk about the spectrum for this meeting. Um, there's a, this is a probably the interesting topic because uh, few last week or a week before, uh, more, every four years there's a mobile radio uh, congress. Uh, that in this congress, uh, below six gigahertz there's spectrum decision. But what's interesting is start to discuss the above six gigahertz in that global spectrum allocation. Uh, Congress that uh, that uh, we we listed these bands. So the green bands was is was identified at this meeting for future use of main meter wave. So these are the bands have the potential globalization or global consistent bands, which is very important for the mobile industry because the mobile roaming you can go everywhere or any places. So. Um, and more interesting, you will see the complexity of the band's decision uh, that will uh, touch upon with many other industries, for example, you know, the sat satellite industry, and uh, uh, and also some other uh, other industry that utilize the band. How harmonization of the bands is important. So in that case, below six, uh, below twenty uh, and above six gigahertz is not on the table. And uh, some of the frequency that we talked, and the uh, 5G early research have uh, put a lot of emphasis, for example, 28 gigahertz also is not in this table. Uh, so that means uh, probably the research community will look more, uh, uh, still a little bit more focus on these uh, green bands that, uh, that potentially could be, make a higher impact. Uh, because technology-wise, realization of the bands from 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 are different. Uh, could be very different system uh, requirement aspect too. So I want to uh, point a little bit on these uh, 70 gigahertz uh, around also with the E-band. So that's a potential a multi gigabit uh, bandwidth or 10 gig bandwidth that really um, can deliver at least the indoor speed of 20 gigabits per second in the handset uh, that target for 5G. Now, unified interface. So we have, we have seen many, many technologies about uh, talking about or discuss or research people are doing. So I would like to category them into three uh, 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 blocks. So the number three blocks is those are the things we talk about. Uh, which is uh, generic for 4G and 5G, or even perhaps something could, uh, some of them can apply to 3G. So, for example, ultra dense network, massive MIMO, unlicensed access, uh, or D2D. These are cross generation technology, 3G, uh, 4G, and 5G will be using this technology. Uh, then, category number one, which are the technology that will distinctly make different of the 5G RAT radio access. Uh, I list a few things that we're, uh, we are researching. Uh, for example, the, uh, 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 the SEMA multiple access, filter OFDM technology, some new coding, for example, polar coding, and also uh, full duplex uh, radio, uh, millimeter wave radio. So these are the uh, basic ingredient for a new uh, rats for the future coming down 5G. And then the f one category, first category, I mean, in order to stitch everything together as a, a unified act radio technology, we need also framework, uh, radio frameworks, uh, the uh, frame structure, numerology, and the cell structure design. For example, the software defined uh, air interface and uh, user centric, no cell access the, uh, uh, the cell structure. Um, the final picture for this generation, they put this thing together. There are very uh, two areas of innovation. One is in the radio access side, um, mostly on the air interface. The other one is the abstraction of the networking. So virtualization of the network will uh, already happen in the LTE uh, time now. So this, the model for this is that we will, ha we will not have a, a big pipe. Every service, every bit treat equally run through the bit, uh, this pipe. 
as LT do, uh, does today. So what the concept will be the slicing. So there will be different segment of a service that make a different radio parameter for this uh, subway network and then retro, the network, the fixed or the net, entire network is a software programmable with a, a virtualized network. And we are talking about the one infrastructure running potentially these slides, uh, not tens, but hundreds or potentially millions around, around the world. So that will fit in a lot of a different, contra, sometimes contradictory service requirement and also um, potential unknown service. So this is uh, the new architecture for this generation. Um, the slicing, this is a very interesting aspect. There's no wording for this. I will, later on I will talk about a, a new Huawei concept about this. So what this means is not one component or one area of network we, uh, we, we chop down into many, many uh, small slices. It is an end-to-end -end slice. So if we look at the sets of all the network components uh, in, in, the, in, in, in this, so we have a physical antenna, front hall, uh, the, uh, the uh, front hall switch part of a uh, CRAN fabric or CRAN CPU resource, and the red numerology, different red, we talk about that, uh, all sets of air interface, and then backhaul and then core network and the internet at large that we, we may not be able to slice, but for this carrier network, all these components with a slice, with an individual slice that is an isolated non-conflict resource allocation and optimization for this slice. So this is also a big uh, academic uh, challenge also, research problem. Uh, if we have uh, tens, hundreds or millions of slices, uh, this is a combinatorial optimization for the entire network and which is uh, very difficult to compute yet we have to do this in 5G. Uh, uh, so this is the concept of the slice. Um, then for the physical layer, um, we, uh, the, the need for slicing is that the radio resource isolation, uh, which is different uh, than before all the generation we designed is a one homogeneous pipe uh, runs through all the service. But now we need isolation and filter. Uh, in the in the in the interface or so, uh, L interface, so this is a thing that I believe it will be uh, a, a must for 5G that uh, that do the inter slicing, the inter service of the isolation of the slicing. One example is the filter OFDM technology. Uh, the other one is also changing the multiple access scheme. Uh, we did the, uh, all the orthogonal uh, dimension uh, for the uh, LTE access. Uh, now, further enhance the, uh, the uh, capacity we need to get into a larger set of uh, uh, resources or, or functions or sequence that need uh, to, to expand to overload the network or over dimension the network so we have a spectrum efficiency enhancement. Uh, this is important uh, also for, from the slicing point of view and because of this uh, physical sequence design that can isolate between the users. So in, in the same service, we can further slice down to the users. In summary, um, these, these are the picture of very generic 5G that running on the same radio resource or different radio resource, same frequency, different frequency, 